Hi guys, so in this video we'll be talking about gene cloning, which is a chapter of genetic engineering. So as talking about genetic engineering, the first topic which comes into our mind is gene cloning. So talking about gene cloning, we'll, I'll be explaining the entire technique, the entire process that takes place in gene cloning and all of the importance uh, which is relevant to genetic engineering as well as to gene cloning. So moving on from there on, so there are basic five steps that are involved in gene cloning. So the first step which comes up in gene cloning is, which is the construction of recombinant DNA molecule. So it happens through a fragment of DNA which contains the gene to be cloned is inserted into a circular DNA molecule, which is also called as a vector. Don't worry if you don't know these terms, I'll be explaining it in detail through a diagrammatic representation in the upcoming slides. So in this, basically our DNA is inserted into a gene through a circular DNA molecule, which is called as a vector to produce a recombinant DNA plasmid molecule. So coming to the second point, which is the introduction of recombinant DNA, uh, DNA, recombinant DNA to a host cell. So as we got the recombinant DNA from the first step, now we have to in, uh, introduce this or insert this DNA into a host cell, which is a normal bacteria or any sort of bacterium that occurs in our environment with the help of two processes as you can see there are two processes that are highlighted which is the electroporation and CACL2 or CACL2 or heat shock methods. I'll be explaining all of the processes in detail in the upcoming slides. So come to the third part which is the multiplication of recombinant DNA molecule. So now uh, as we have inserted the recombinant DNA to the host cell now it will start to multiply within itself so that it can form as many number of recombinant DNA molecules within the host cell, which is the bacterium. So as it says, within the host cell, the bacterium multiplies, producing numerous identical copies, not only of itself, but also of the gene that it carries. Coming to the fourth part, which is the cell division. So after a large number of cell divisions, a colony or a clone of identical host cell is produced. So as you know, in the third step, the there are many number of recombinant molecules that are formed through division. Now in the fourth step, cell division says that the bacterium divides into two and each bacterium has its own recombinant uh, molecules, many recombinant molecules in itself. So it can form more number of uh, recombinant DNA molecules in these bacterium. So now these have become, uh, now a single bacterium has become two bacterium through cell division and now they can produce more number of recombinant DNA molecules. So this uh, fourth point is relevant to the cell division point, which says the gene carried by the recombinant is now set to be cloned. In the uh, red highlighted point, you can see that it is now set to be cloned. So coming to the five points, so how do we know that the particular uh, DNA molecule is a recombinant one? So the first, fifth point, which says that the selection of DNA recombinant model, DNA molecule, which happens through selected uh, which happens through selection of presence of antibiotics so in this antibiotics can be ampicillin or tetracycline which i'll be explaining all of its importance in detail uh, or it can be other molecules in the bacterium so it basically depends on the type of selectable marker present in the plasmid vector so it depends on the type of antibiotic or the gene which is present on the plasmid vector i'll be explaining what the term plasmid is also so more, uh, moving to the next slide so yeah so in this, uh, we will insert the bacterium as the second point states as the, as the recombinant DNA molecule gets inside the bacterium, as you can see here. So the third step is the before cell division, the recombinant DNA molecule that's get, that gets inside the bacterium gets divided or divides and thus we get number of uh, more number of recombinant DNA molecules. All right. So from that, we got number of DNA molecules in a single bacterium. So now the fourth step comes, which is the cell division. So now, as we know, the number of DNA molecules have been formed, have divided. Now the entire cell divides. The entire bacterium divides into two. All right. So the entire cell divides into two to form two bacteriums. All right. So it gets divided into two to form two bacterium. And these two bacterium individually in these two bacteriums, the number of uh, a recombinant DNA molecules will divide in itself to form more uh, DNA recombinants so that the number increases and thus we can get more number of antibodies through it. 
so in the fifth point comes the selection how do we know that all of these which of these recombinant dna molecules are recombinants or or what or, or all of these which have reproduced or divided or formed more number of dna recombinants are uh, belong to that particular bacterium so there are a number of methods which we know as selectable marker as i've said uh, selectable antibiotics such as tetracycline and ampicillin which i'll be explaining in the further coming slides so moving on from there on, so let's talk about a plasmid what is a plasmid or a cloning vector so what is a cloning vector as i've previously termed that what is clo vector and all everything so now you know what is a vector or a plasmid so what is a cloning vector or a cloning plasmid so basically that vector is known as cloning plasmid or a vector when it has the capability to attach or get um, or get uh, inserted with the help of a fragmented dna in simple words when a vector gets attached or gets uh, uh, ligated with the help of a foreign dna or a fragmented dna in the circular dna so that it can be inserted into a bacterium and thus it can form divisions and as many as colonies it can form in it so basically a cloning vector is a plasmid which is a circular molecule of dna that lead an independent existence in the bacterial cells all right so the second point is plasmid almost always carries one or more genes and often these genes are responsible for useful characteristic displayed by host bacteria and the third point is the plasmid dna can be used as a cloning vector definitely a plasmid dna can be used as a cloning vector when it has the ability to get attached or get ligated by a fragmented or a foreign dna and thus it can be inserted into a bacterium and thereon it can divide and form more number of dna recombinants all right so let's coming to the components of what a dna a cloning vector must possess so that it can be called as a cloning vector so the first point which is the uh, selectable marker as you can see so some of the examples of selectable markers are antibiotic resistant gene which can be chloroamphenol uh, ficol uh, ampicillin streptomycin erythromycin canamycin tetracycline etc many sort of resistant gene the second point which is the multiple cloning site so this is the cloning site for gene of interest and it has the multiple cloning site are recognition site of many different restriction endonuclease enzymes so i'll be explaining what are endonuclease enzymes and what all of these terms mean and what are a restriction endonuclease enzymes so basically this is one of the most important uh, these enzymes which are involved in gene cloning uh, involved for the ligation and cutting and everything which i'll be explaining the the further coming slides part so third point is the origin of replication so most pl uh, most plasmids possess at least one dna sequence that can act as a origin of replication so they are able to multiply within the cell independently so we have seen the previous slides so the cell divides and number of recombinant molecules are formed in large numbers so how does it happen it happens through origin of replication so origin of replication is involved for division all right so this is the main part which involves in the division part all right so i'll show you a diagrammatic picture of how a dna cloning vector or a plasmid looks like so this is how it looks like so it has a ab resistant or a resistant selectable marker which is which can be ampicillin tetracycline or both it has mcs or multiple cloning sites and at the down at the bottom you can see origin of replication through which it divides so i want to keep this video short and simple so i'll be explaining the further parts of this how it divides and how the role of restriction endonuclease enzyme takes place in the upcoming slides so stay tuned for more and thank you for watching this video